After spending an amazing week exploring Split, we decided to fly into Zagreb and check out the Croatia's capital. Okay, so we're about to uh, enter our apartment here in Zagreb. We just arrived in Zagreb. We're staying at Apartment Atlas. We've just checked in. Uh, this place rates really highly on Booking.com, like around nine. Uh, it's really nice, actually. It's tucked away in a hidden courtyard, so you've got everything you need. You've got a kitchen with four burners. You've got fridge, freezer. If you actually come as a family with kids, there's a playground out here that you can see that you can access that we have keys to get into. I got a nice little double queen size bed in here, little bedroom. So really, it's got everything you need. Uh, kitchen table, couch where Marley's already made herself comfortable. Got heaters, chairs, beds. Got a nice modern looking bathroom with a nice hotel sign on to say that it's been cleaned. Big shower and bath. Quite impressed. This place is. Quite nice. So this is fantastic. The owner's left a sheet with plenty of information, all with QR scanning codes, so you can look them up on your phone. Just out for a walk here in Zagreb, and we stumbled across Bauhaus Jazz Bar. A really cosy place. Lots of trees, lots of outdoor tables. Uh, actually, pretty stunning. Beer's good. Prices are cheap as cheap here. So if you're ever in Zagreb, Bauhaus Jazz Bar is where you want to be. Okay guys, we just bought two beers, this big one, this one, Marley's Coke, 7 euro 30 cents in Zagreb, so definitely way better price. Hey guys, today finds us in the middle of Zagreb and we're about to go on a free walking tour to see the sights of the city. Can't wait, should be interesting. Uh, it's a very good looking and nice city, so keen to see what we find and discover. We've done many of the free walking tours around cities in Europe and the one thing that you'll find is that the guides are always fantastic. Even though the tours say they're free, these guides rely on getting tips at the end of the tour. So they put in 110% all the time. Okay, so after a short introduction on the history of Zagreb, we are now heading off to explore the sites. One of the most prominent sites in Zagreb is the Zagreb Cathedral. The cathedral was first started in the 13th century and has had a few changes over the years. At 108 metres high, it dominates the skyline of Zagreb. Uh, there was a big earthquake in Zagreb in 2020 and it caused a lot of the churches to crack, parts to fall down. Lots of this old town area here has been rebuilt. Lots of the roofs fell in on these classic looking houses. So apparently there's still a lot of work going on in this city because uh, only three years ago the earthquake, yeah, wrecked a lot of roofs and buildings. People have been living around the area of modern day Zagreb for thousands of years, but the name Zagreb was first used in 1094. During the 13th century, Old Zagreb, as it was once known then, consisted of two settlements on neighbouring hills with a river separating them in between. A good tour guide like the one we had on our free tour will be able to show you exactly the spot in the city where the creek used to run that separated the two settlements that eventually made up modern day Zagreb. One of the really cool things to do in Zagreb is head to the upper town at noon every day where you'll see a cannon fired from the top of a tower. The 12 noon cannon shot is part of a local folklore in Zagreb that in the 15th century, while there was an army about to attack the city, someone fired a cannonball by accident and it scared the army away and the city was saved. You'll find a large crowd gathers every single day at the bottom of the tower to witness 
the cannon go off. It's still a shock though every time it happens and the crowd just goes crazy. <laughs> This church, the most popular one in Zagreb, to get married in, of course. Luckily, if you do get married here, there is an easy way out. It takes you just a couple of steps, and you end up in the Museum of Broken Relations. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it, the circle of love and life flows in this work. Another of the big ticket locations in Zagreb is St. Mark's Church. You'll find it's popular because it's got many collared tiles on the roof that make up the coat of arms of both Zagreb and Croatia. Unfortunately, when we visited Zagreb, we weren't able to go inside any of the churches. They'd been damaged by a recent earthquake and were having some serious renovations done to them to make them stable and welcoming for visitors again. Zagreb is home to a couple of excellent bar and restaurant streets that lead off the main square. Very popular with tourists and locals alike who come here to eat and drink. After going on the walking tour in the morning, Marley and I were so impressed with our guide, we decided to go on a paid walking tour in the afternoon through the streets of Zagreb, teaching us all about how Croatia had been torn apart by communism and the homeland war. So look what we just found in Zagreb, a Harry Potter shop. So while we've been staying here in Zagreb, our local supermarket to buy groceries and stuff has been spa straight over the road. Let's go and take a look. Plenty of cold pre-cut meats on offer everywhere. They even have some really good pre-made meals, chicken and rice, chicken fillets you can buy, scalloped potatoes. In the suburbs of Zagreb, you will find Moroji Cemetery. It's not your usual tourist attraction, but it's one that draws people in when they're in Zagreb. People come here because it borrows elements of castles and famous palaces across Europe with its moss-lined walls, domes and buildings. The Dolak Market in central Zagreb is home to all things food, fresh food, meats, cheeses, you name it, they've got it. But while we were there, my wife took the opportunity to go shopping for tablecloths. You see, lace tablecloths of Europe is one of the things that she loves most. Buys them everywhere we go, especially in Poland and now in Croatia. Zagreb is known to be a hilly city. These days there's a pedestrian tunnel that runs underneath one of the hills. So we're walking through these tunnels here. They were wartime tunnels, but now they're a shortcut from one side of the city hill to the other side, so it's quite interesting. Here we are at the Zagreb funicular. Uh, it's one of the world's shortest funiculars. It's 66 metres long. Uh, it's also one of the world's steepest funiculars. Takes you about 68 seconds to get up and down it. And The Museum of Broken Relationships in Zagreb is home to an eclectic collection of items. These items represent people's personal experiences with relationship breakups. There's a story next to each item. You can walk through there and you'll find it quite fascinating. We only had a couple of full days in Zagreb. Uh, what I found was that Zagreb was a really nice city, medium sized, easy to get around, plenty to see, plenty to do, lots of places to eat and drink. Uh, we really enjoyed our time in Zagreb, actually to the fact that we'll probably go back there one day and spend some more time there because it was really calm, casual and a place that we really enjoyed. Mm -hmm.